Hello everybody and welcome to another Scuffed Radio video. Today we are going to be reviewing the Motorola SL300 radio. I've had this radio for a couple months now and I think I'm finally ready to do a review on it. This is a really cool little radio that I had seen pop up in my feed a while ago and I thought hey why not give it a try it's you know it's a cool little Motorola and I love Motorola gear. Motorola gear is probably my favorite brand of radio. At this point I've got two XPR 7550Es and the SL300 so I'm no stranger to Motorola. I really like their stuff so I figured I would do a review from an amateur operator's perspective on one of these because there really isn't that online right now. So this is the radio itself. We'll just kind of go over the form factor here. It's very slim, very small and it fits right in your hand. It's about the size of a cell phone. Very lightweight. So let's get into the review here. The cons. We're going to start with the cons first. And this is all going to be done from the perspective of an amateur radio operator, not a commercial user, an amateur operator. I do use this thing the way a lot of commercial people would, but I am not actually running a business with this thing. So this is all done from an amateur's perspective. So let's get into the cons first. The number one con, of course, is no front panel programming. You cannot input frequencies in here on the fly from the radio itself. It has to be plugged into CPS to actually update the channels in here. So if you're traveling, you better bring a micro USB cable and a laptop with CPS 16 on it to be able to program this thing. Con number two, which is only halfway a con, it ain't really that bad of a thing, it's just sometimes a little annoying, is that there's no volume knob on this radio. The volume is actually controlled from these buttons here on the side, and sometimes if you want to make very quick adjustments to the volume, instead of being able to reach down and just spin the dial all the way one direction or the other, um, you actually have to kind of put some thought into it and sit here clicking the volume buttons, which again, is not that bad for a radio this size, and I really don't, it doesn't really frustrate me that much, I really don't ever hate it it's just something that's you know not as good as it could be but at the same time I don't really think I'd like it if there was a volume knob on here I don't know where you'd put one aside from the top and I just think it would be kind of annoying so uh, I think that it's only halfway a con but it is a con nonetheless number two is that this thing has a limited number of channels so with a XPR series radio you have like a thousand channels or something with these radios here you have 99 channels split into two zones so you can either do 99 channels in one zone or 50 in each zone and you only get two zones so if you are someone who travels a lot or goes to a lot of different areas that does kind of get in the way of say for example the way I set things up on my XPR series radios where I have like 20 zones each one has 20 channels in it for every city or state that I'm in I can actually separate everything out on this you really can't do that which ain't a big huge deal but it is something to keep in mind because it is kind of annoying uh, another con is the small antenna on this thing so if you're trying to talk to a UHF or VHF repeater this is the UHF radio they have a VHF version the antenna is the same size I can't imagine the VHF antenna would work worth a crap being only an inch and a half long this thing is tiny and on UHF it's not such a big deal but when you compare the XPR series UHF antenna to this one, this one's definitely a lot smaller and there is a notable uh, performance decrease when you switch to an antenna that small. Now that being said, the radio still performs really, really well, but it's definitely not a long range max performance kind of radio. The next con is of course the programming software. It is not like just a free download from a website like a lot like Chirp is, for example. You actually do have to kind of go through some back channels to get CPS 16, especially if you want to get the hacked version which lets you use the 25 kilohertz bandwidth. You kind of need to know somebody. Um, it's not it's not hard to find it. There's a lot of prepper forums where they share that software and the uh, hacked entitlement keys and everything like that for free. So it's not that hard to get, but definitely make sure you have the software before you buy the radio because otherwise you're going to have to send this off somewhere to be programmed and they're going to charge you an arm and a leg and they're going to look at you funny because, oh, it's an amateur and da da da. They're stupid about it. It's a radio at the end of the day. It shouldn't be treated like a government secret, but it is what it is. The software is not that hard to get for yourself, so just make sure you have it before you buy the radio and you'll be fine. Another con, and this is the, probably the biggest con for a lot of hams, is that this is a mono band radio. It only does UHF or it only does VHF. It does not do crossband, it does not do UHF, VHF, it is stuck on UHF because of course Motorola does not make a lot of dual band radios. They do, but even their XPR series radios, I have to have two of them for VHF 
and UHF. So that's kind of a big con for a lot of people who are wanting a all around well-rounded amateur radio. This is not that because of that. And my last con is going to be the push to talk on this radio. I like a good clicky type of uh, PTT. As you can see on the XPR series radios, when I click it, it's a definite like tactile click. On the SL300, it's a little more spongy. It's a little closer to say a Baofeng UV5R PTT, and there is a lot more resistance on the push to talk. That's not to say it's a deal breaker or really all that bad. I have just personally found myself accidentally releasing the PTT, whereas that absolutely never happens with the XPR 7550E series radios. I have many times accidentally let go of the PTT during a long transmission because your, your fingers get tired a lot quicker with this than they do with the other radio. So that's going to be all the cons for this radio. I think that's a fairly long list of cons for an amateur to use but I haven't gone over the pros yet which is why I personally really like this radio so the number one pro of this radio and pretty much the whole reason why I got it is the small form factor this thing weighs very little in fact I have the data sheet here and we can actually see how much it weighs so with the battery uh, with the biggest battery you can get, there's two sizes of battery. I have the big batteries, but the weight difference is very minimal. Uh, it is 168 grams. So compare that with a Motorola XPR 7550E, which is around 500 grams, I believe, uh, with the big battery. It's quite a heavy radio. This radio weighs almost nothing. I mean, it's, it's incredibly lightweight. It feels like holding a cell phone in your hand. I mean, this is a, a Galaxy S10 here next to the radio and you can see that they have very similar form factors uh, and they're both very thin. So it's almost like having a cell phone radio. Um, it kind of feels like that when you're using it. The next thing that is cool about this radio is the belt holster that you can get. So you can actually get a belt clip which would go right here or you can get the holster and I have the holster because it's really neat. You stick it on your pocket or your belt and you can just click the radio in like that and then anytime you want it I usually have it on my left side. So anytime you want it, you just grab the top of the radio and push these two tabs apart and it comes right out. So it's a very quick, very easy to use, and very lightweight little setup here. This is a cool little setup with the belt clip and the holster. I just, I started using this radio because the XPR radios were so heavy. These are so much lighter and more comfortable to use for a daily driver. Because that's what I use this one for as a daily driver now. I've moved on from the XPR series and I'm now using this as a daily. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love my XPR 7550s. I will never stop loving these and I always use these when I go to events and stuff like that. But for daily, when I'm walking around, getting in and out of vehicles, this is the way to go for sure. The next thing that I think is really cool about this radio is the actual display on it. Now you may say, what display? There's no display on this radio. Well, there actually secretly is. So if I push the uh, info button here, also known as the power button, Watch this. Battery high. We actually get a little dot matrix display built under the plastic of the screen, which is absolutely crazy. If I change channels, watch this. It actually reads out the channel name in a scrolling dot matrix display. That is just super cool. I think that's one of the coolest displays I've ever seen. It is very readable in direct sunlight. It's like protected, it can't get damaged. I mean, it's underneath the plastic. And it's just very unique and very simplistic and very easy to read and use. So I think the display on this thing is freaking cool, man. Not many radios have that. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen any other radio that had that style of display on it there. The next thing that is a pro with this radio is what little controls it does have are very easy to use. One button on the top for power and battery level literally just push it to see battery level. On the side we have volume up and volume down and the zone button. So if we push the zone button, zone two or zone one, and then volume up and down, it actually gives you a little tone there, like a reference tone just to see how loud it is. It works really well. The screen is cool and the controls, what little there are, are very easy to use, very easy to understand. And you can actually 
program this button here to do whatever you want. So I have it set up as a zone selection. If you don't have zone set up, you can set it to do something else. I have it set up for zones and it works great. The next thing that is nice about pretty much all Motorola radios is their audio. They have audio that is, in my opinion, pretty much second to none as far as readability and clarity goes. So when I'm talking on this thing, uh, I can be in a loud environment, a windy environment, doesn't matter, I will be heard no matter what. I also don't have to hold this radio very close to my face. I usually hold this radio about 12 inches from my face uh, when I'm talking because you don't need to be right up on it. A lot of cheaper handhelds you have to be right up on that microphone to get any kind of audio out of it. But with this you just kind of talk at whatever distance feels comfortable to you and you'll be heard. Uh, the same thing goes for the receive. The radio does get quite loud. Not as loud as say the XPR series radios but it still gets plenty loud for outdoor even noisy environment usage. I've had no issues with this being too quiet and it also does not really distort very bad when it gets loud. It's really not that bad. And I will put in here a uh, transmit audio sample just so you can hear what this thing sounds like coming over a FM analog repeater. That's something that I failed to mention earlier on. This is a DMR and analog radio. I don't even use the DMR functions because I absolutely despise DMR. But for analog, this thing is fantastic. So all my references here are going to be done with analog in mind. The next thing that is somewhat surprising about this radio is the battery life. So the batteries are 2300 milliamp hour. Kind of looks like an early Motorola flip phone battery. They are a little thicker, but they are very inexpensive and they actually last a good amount of time. I am very frequently on the key on this thing for extended periods. I do run it at low power when I'm having long conversations, but this thing will last you all night long. And couple that with the fact that batteries are inexpensive, you can get spares for pretty cheap, and it's really not a bad deal. The batteries last plenty long. If I leave this in the morning with this on full battery, when I get back home, the battery will still be in the high state. It just says battery high. I've never once got home actually after a day of using this and had it tell me the battery was medium or low. Now the monitor time on this is not amazing. I feel like you get a pretty balanced performance ratio. With an XPR series radio with the big battery, this thing will monitor for three days straight. You can actually pretty much use it for three days straight with uh, intermittent transmitting and three days worth of receiving. You can use these for about three days. This one you'll get probably about a day out of it with transmitting and receiving. Um, I would say you might be able to get two days if you're doing mostly receiving, but the batteries definitely don't last a super long time. Uh, you know, just monitoring. Like if you leave this thing on and you throw it in your backpack and you drive, you know, two days somewhere, when you get to your destination, the battery will be dead even if you uh, did not really transmit with it. That's why I say buying extra spares is a great idea, especially if you tend to talk on this a lot because uh, you can hot swap the batteries, literally open the back case, swap the battery, and then you can actually put the uh, other batteries in the charger, and we'll go over that here in a minute. And the last pro of with this radio, which a lot of people are probably be thinking about, is the price. This thing costs around $150 to $200 used on eBay. I paid $150 for mine. I didn't get it on eBay. I got it from a friend of mine. But I have seen them go for as low as $150 on eBay, which is a lot better than the XPR series radios that go for around $700 to $800 used. So this is pretty good. Uh, for $150, bucks, you get a rock-solid, really fun little toy of a radio. It's not really much. I guess toy ain't the right word, but you get a rock-solid, really fun little radio that you can carry with you anywhere and will give you the performance and feeling of using a high-quality, commercial-grade radio in the form factor of something like a Baofeng. So it is a really cool little radio. For the price, it is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And the last thing that I do want to touch on that not many people put a lot of thought into is the performance of this radio itself. How does it stack up to other Motorola radios and especially how does it stack up to your average amateur radio? So I have multiple amateur grade radios, some nicer than others, but I have compared this radio to the performance of these radios and I have to say that the Motorola definitely will outperform 
pretty much any amateur radio by a small margin. And what do I mean by that? I mean receiver performance, transmit performance. When it says it puts out a certain amount of power, it you can be guaranteed it puts out exactly that much power. There's no conversion factor. There's no Chinese conversion factor. The radio is very, very sensitive. Motorola's radio performance is almost second to none. I have not come across something that I thought was better. These, in my opinion, are the gold standard. And we actually have the data here to kind of uh, go over and just kind of see um, what this performs like as far as the scientific specifications go. So on analog, on high power, this thing puts out three watts. And that's both on VHF and on the UHF models. It puts out three watts on high power exactly. Uh, it's actually closer to two watts on digital because it's a little bit of a different type of signal and you can do more with a digital signal than you can with an analog signal, but it does put out three watts. It says here that it has range max technology and this claims that your three watt radio uh, will perform equivalent to a four watt radio because of range max technology, whatever that means. And that's kind of feels to me just like a bunch of BS. Um, this definitely performs like a three watt radio but it's a good solid three watts. I mean, something like this, which is a five watt radio on UHF is actually only putting out around three watts. So you can rest assured that you're getting exactly what you're paying for here, exactly what's advertised. It puts out exactly what it's supposed to. The frequency coverage is 403 to 470 megahertz. So that covers the entire ham band as well as GMRS, which is really cool because I do have all the GMRS stuff in here and that works great. It works with any other GMRS radio just fine. Let's go over the receiver for these things, which is what a lot of people probably care about most. The analog sensitivity for 12 dB cyanide is 0.22 microvolts. So that's actually better than a lot of radios by just 0.03 microvolts. I know microvolts aren't everything. You also have stuff like selectivity and other factors which contribute to a sensitive radio, but 0.22 microvolts is better than a lot of radios on the market. Most of them are 0.3 or 0.25, this is a little bit better than those. And I can say you can notice a difference whenever you're using one of these versus another radio. This one will have an edge over any amateur radio very slightly, and I'm talking like razor thin margins. This will have an edge though. The adjacent channel selectivity is 45 dB at 12.5 kilohertz and 70 dB at 25 kilohertz, which is what we run this at, 25 kilohertz for amateur stuff always. So you have 70 dB of adjacent channel selectivity. It is a 0.5 watt speaker in this thing. Again, not a ton of power, but it actually is quite loud with very minimal distortions, which is pretty good. And the conducted spurious emission says minus 57 dBm. I'm not exactly sure how to quantify that, but that's what the manual itself says. Final thoughts on this radio are, if you're looking for a fun little radio with commercial grade quality, you should buy this. 150 bucks, 200 bucks on eBay, you can't go wrong. Get yourself a couple extra batteries here. You can drop them into the charger when you're not using them, which is another cool little feature. Just drop them right in like that. They will sit there and charge. And if you've got multiple, you run the battery down this one, pop the cover off, put another one in and pop the old battery into the charger. You can talk all night long. It's a great little setup. Lots of fun. I use this thing daily for crossband operations. So in my work van, I have a crossband repeater, which crossbands my VHF repeater to UHF. And I will use this thing all day long. The audio sounds great. The performance is fantastic. And I really can't recommend this enough for a just all around an enjoyable experience. It's a great little radio. I don't think you'll regret it. And the cool thing is you can sell them again. If you don't end up liking it, put it back on eBay, sell it for 200 bucks. Somebody will probably buy it because these things are always moving around the market. They are a nice little fun little thing. So anyway, that's going to do it for this review. Hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all found this interesting. If you did, leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye. Bye-bye-bye.